Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Daryl Sladden. I'm the uh, technical marketing manager and the sort of the senior architect a lot of the location-based services at Cisco. Uh, and what I was going to talk to you about today is something that we launched last week, which is the first cloud service for an on-prem controller. And so this is kind of a new market that Cisco's getting into to be able to say, yeah, I love my on-prem controller, I want to control stuff that's there, but I want to be able to buy additional services. And the first service that we're offering is CMX in the cloud. And so what is CMX in the cloud? Generally how it works is, right, you've got your, your uh, wireless LAN controller, and then in order for it to work with all real legacy controllers that were designed six years ago that didn't know how to talk to the cloud, we created this one thing called the proxy. And the proxy speaks one arm that says old NMSP and SNMP, you know, protocols that a guy in college would go, you're doing NMSP and SNMP? They hate those old protocols. On the other arm, it speaks HTTPS. So it can do a very, a very effective cloud service. So that's what you put on-prem for your older controllers. And then we're gonna have some stuff with newer controllers where that's no longer required. But for, so that we can go way back to controllers for, and, 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 a, uh, and environments for people who already have a bunch of stuff uh, and they don't, then they don't have something that's cloud ready, we put this box on site that makes it cloud ready. And then what do we do from that? Then we actually offer two capabilities to start with. One is a, a, a new captive portal. Actually, the captive portal, because if, if you just want the captive portals to appear and you don't really care about statistics, you can actually go without the, without the proxy, just as a little trick. But if you want statistics, like how much, um, if I have a guest Wi-Fi network, how much traffic did every guest use, um, how many times did I try to get the guest to, to click on the, the submit button and then he, that he didn't click, all those sort of statistics come through the control channel, which is a proxy, but the actual browser um, splash page comes directly to the, to the uh, cloud-based MSE. And the other thing that we offer with that is presence analytics statistics. And presence analytics statistics is sort of the first start into our wider uh, uh, tracking you <laughs> analytics, it's not, which is not what it is. Uh, but the presence analytics effectively does a peg count per AP. It says, well, that AP up there, how many, how many clients is that AP seeing? How many clients is this AP client seeing? How many clients is that AP seeing? And it does, so it sees the, the clients, does a peg count for the number of clients. Um, it does both the associated clients as well as the unassociated clients and puts that all into a database to do analytics, right? That says, oh, this guy saw 50 people and it saw the same MAC addresses that were at the front, therefore he must have been at the front and in this zone. And so it does presence analytics, which is a lower form of, of uh, location analytics because it actually doesn't do that triangulation. It doesn't say you're uh, 14 dB away from this one, 30 dB from the, this one, open air path loss, that means you must be in the middle. So it, won't, it doesn't do that initially, it just does peg counting per actually access point. But that still offers a lot of great value for customers. People who, are, who don't want to say, well, I don't have my access points put on Prime. I don't actually know the map. I don't physically know exactly where they are. I know, you know, those are the front access points, those are the back access points, right? With that, that's all I need to know and be able to say, these MAC addresses heard these, these probes and these packets at this rate, and now I can do a bunch of great analytics data. And that's, and that's really the heart of what we're offering, the, the idea that um, this is the first service that I have on-prem controllers. I want to try something out, I don't necessarily want to make the entire investment. If it, if it succeeds, I want to be able to buy it in a different way. I want to be able to buy it for the five access points that are in the front of my office and not for the rest of my giant network. I can now do that on a per AP basis by giving Cisco a subscription, a small amount, and I'm actually going to show you for the first time the prices on the slide. I'll splash it so it's not going to be too long, but you'll see it, uh, to be able to say, hey, this is how much it's actually going to cost. And so instead of buying a big server and licenses that are perpetual and then uh, tax support that I buy per year and then power and then cooling, I now instead pay Cisco a small amount of money per AP and then we, we spin up a, a, a virtual machine. Well, we actually have a multi-tenanted machine that we actually um, host in either EMEA or in the United States. We have a, a, a sort of a, I got a letter from the lawyer that says all the compliance that we are in. So we are fully compliant with all EU privacy requirements. I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> because that, there's like, Tita was like, these are the exact words you can say. Because there's, there's um, directives and there's regulations and then there's laws and there's all these different ones. So uh, we are compliant with all the EU privacy requirements, the li li legal uh, privacy requirements. Um, and that's really what we, what we begin to offer. And so generally how it looks like uh, on the slide, you can see it's pretty easy. The clients talk to the access point, talk to the wireless LAN controller. Really old wireless LAN controllers or newer ones, we still put a proxy on site, gathers all that statistics, sends it off to our cloud. 
in the cloud, we do two things, render a really cool and graphic, and I can actually show you, uh, captive portal. And our captive portal, um, if you ever worked with you know, Purple Wi-Fi or some of the other Captivas and things like that, they have great per captive uh, portals. And a lot of the captive portals I deal with at hotels and at airports and at stadiums are crappy, <laughs> right? They actually have to type in, in tiny little fonts on my phone, my, my room number and stuff like that. It's just hugely irritating, right? And so we want to kind of make some of those experiences better nice graphics, a good, you know, a map maybe, or something that's relevant to me. And that's kind of what we focused on on the captive portal, to make it something that's better and relevant and not a crappy experience. And, I, and that's one of the things that I think will get better in a few years, that a better captive portal. Uh, and then the other one is the, uh, the in-cloud analytics, right? So that we, well, you'll be able to point to this dashboard. This dashboard's gonna be uh, cmxcloud.cisco.com and you'll log in with your email address kind of just like Meraki, <laughs> right? We, we, then, we then kind of uh, create this virtual DNS name that gives you a you know, five-digit site, .cmxcloud.cisco.com, and that's where you're gonna go to be able to log in. So, question over here. Question about that is, is any of this stuff Meraki IP that's being then integrated in another well, way? Well, we have, this all uh, totally we, separate yeah, no, so we have our, our great architect. So what the IP part of it is the discussions at the high level with how do you build a world-class um, cloud-based service. That's what it is. We don't share like, hey, we're gonna put SR stuff on your servers because we have different development plans, but we do share the intellectual capacity. So our big chief scientist, Manoj, talks to their chief scientist and says, hey, what's the right way to do it? And so that's what I think we do share. Okay. So uh, just to, again, about that cloud proxy, which is something that's installed on site. So again, you used to have you know, your mobility services engine or a bunch of other things on site. Now we're gonna ask you to put something else. It's a VMware OVA, no cost, small footprint, but it does require you to spin up this OVA, uh, four CPUs, uh, uh, eight gigs of memory, um, 50 gig hard drive, just to, it's just to exist. And it's effectively a stateless, uh, a stateless device that is purely a translator of old protocols and a new protocols. It does need to have SNMP to talk to the controller saying, hey controller, can you trust me? Because I'm on your site, I'm your kid. And hey controller, can you tell me the list of all your MAC addresses of all your APs? Because I need that in order to send it off to the cloud. So it does that little translation capability and then it sends it off to the cloud. So it just needs to speak those two, you have to give it trust of the controller via an SNMP on one leg and then just literally the URL of it on the other leg because then we do an HTTP TTPS authentication and your cloud-based authentication handles it on the other side. But what we actually are looking at is um, in the, uh, later this year, as we develop wireless LAN controllers, we're looking at having just a little section, like we configure a bunch of other stuff, configure and you point to Cisco's cloud. And the, you know, the services we'll offer is this cool captive portal, this presence analytics, maybe location, wireless services, assurance to make sure and audit and check your configs. So that's really the beginning that we're using. We've built this cloud platform so that people who have these communities can be able to go online and, and we'll actually be able to help them make a better wireless network because they'll be able to share best practices, point your controller at our cloud, and be able to get additional capabilities. The first will be the native, again, presence and, and, captive, uh, and uh, captive portal. The next will be location, and then after that, you'll have wireless service assurance, right? That says, hey, you're, you're, we're going to uh, gather information about your RF parameters and say, hey, maybe, we, maybe um, Samsung came up with some new device and it's screwing up your network, and we've noticed it from a bunch of different people, and we can be able to share some of that best practices. Oh, if you turn this knob on. And these are future thoughts, but that's the idea about wireless service assurance that can also really take advantage of a cloud service that you'll start to be able to offer additional. So this is the beginning of the next sort of infrastructure that you'll say, hey, I've got my stuff on-prem. It's my, it's my APs. It will work autonomously. I can cut off the cloud whenever I don't want it. I pay if I want it, and if I don't want it, I, I don't have to pay, but I continue to work autonomously. But if I want some of that sort of crowd value of wireless service assurance, or if I want Cisco to spin up the present servers for me, I can actually do that. So that's kind of what the direction for Cisco Wireless, that will actually have the ability natively in your controllers to talk to a cloud service and get some additional functions and features. And the thing about a cloud service is, well, we do all the work of patching the software. Oh, there's this bug. Oh, um, there's some new open, open SSL 1.2 security patch, and you got to download it and patch the OS. No, our cloud service is going to have it handles that for you. So it makes the life of the IT administrator a little bit easier for these particular roles because they can they can say you know Cisco's got to handle the the issues that come with um, patching and maintaining the software for this particular service.
right? So again, what does it cost? <laughs> um, so it's pretty affordable. Uh, uh, it's about um, $85 per year for the per year per AP. And so for that, we're spinning up this machine, running the uh, ping power and path all in the data center. We deal with all that stuff. Um, so for small deployments, right, you know, maybe you have 100 APs, it's only going to be 8,500 bucks a year, and we do all the, all the, all the work for the, you're maintaining your server, including support. You can call us 24-7. We'll make sure the system's always up. We'll, you'll ask, be able to ask any, you don't have to add any tech uh, support to that. That's the all-inclusive price. We offered by distributors <laughs> and uh, sold at the regular sort of Cisco SKU discounts, so you get a bunch of uh, services discounts you know, um, on top of these prices for the end users. So, but uh, the native thing is you buy it in either one, three, or five years, and if you actually buy it for the five years, you get a discount. But you decide, you know, the smallest thing you could buy is for 125 bucks, you buy presence and analytics for one AP for one year. <laughs> it kind of would piss us off because we have to do a whole <laughs> giant server for you, but, uh, but that's, the, that's the risk that we're taking, right? We'll, we'll say, yes, you can buy in small increments, and we'll be able to offer you this service. How would that actually compare to an on-premise solution? Well, uh, it compares pretty well. So if you look at this, this is a, the cost of 100 APs per year. So if I wanted to add a really nice splash page so it doesn't look crappy and have that horrible experience that I have at, at the hotel, and if I wanted to add presence analytics to be able to say, yeah, I can understand that there are 50 people in the front of the room, 50, 75 in the back, that you know, during this year, the, um, the busiest day of the year was Thanksgiving, and this is how many people I'm going to expect next Thanksgiving, um, you know, uh, whatever types of information I can gather from my analytics, it would have costed me about $38,000 to do that on the traditional on-prem solution, right? You buy a couple of MSCs, you buy server service support, you buy your ping, power, and path, um, and then you have to um, have some, some, even a small amount of administration costs. Somebody's got to be uh, SSHing in there and providing those patches and doing the software upgrades. We put a really very conservative number <laughs> For that, it usually costs you a lot more than a thousand bucks to maintain two servers. Again, this is an HA environment on your own on your own network for a year. So instead of that, if I could just you know buy uh, for uh, connecting presence at a um, hundred at uh, um, at a discounted rate uh, for a hundred APs, it would only cost me about ten thousand dollars. So in that case, and that for three years. So imagine it's only going to be three grand per year per year to, to be able to um, do this. So. Compared to Mark's APs, it's a, it's a steal. <laughs> uh, so it's really going to be a very effective solution, won't cost a lot and give you the, the full capabilities. And it's the beginning of other capabilities that's gonna be offered as a cloud service. And again, what we're talking about, those other ones, the first one that we're gonna do is, right now we just do the peg counting per AP that says it's here and here. The next one we do is we actually be able to triangulate and do locations. One of the um, issues with that, just sort of understanding the, the methodology is, that's a lot more compute intensive, which is kind of helpful for the cloud, right? We can, we can expand and, and contract the compute, but that's really the difference. Peg counting for an AP, it's a very low, smaller database, but actually doing a, uh, a heat map from every AP, computing the open air path loss from one AP to another, doing the full calculations, that's a very expensive, uh, uh, computationally expensive solution, and so that will be the next one that's going to be offered. And again, we'll be able to, we'll, we'll offer different tiers of cloud services, right? So connect is the base tier, connect with presence is the next one. Connect with location will cost a little bit more because we got more compute to it, so we got to cool it and, and heat it. And then, you know, other services such as wireless service assurance in the future. So we'll be able to offer different services as, a, as on top of that particular license. So you'll buy your licenses and be able to sort of add additional services. Um, that's really all I want to talk about. The, the, uh, the customer journey is actually pretty easy on that. Uh, you place your order from either the partner or the customer. Uh, you actually get an email, kind of like Meraki, saying, oh, we provisioned your system. Here's your user ID. Here's your uh, uh, password. Come and please log on. Uh, and then you, the, the, the end customer work that they do have to do is set up the proxy if they want it, or if they just want to the connect, they've got to create the connect portal. Uh, they add a couple of uh, configs in your wireless LAN controller. Right, so this is kind of the email that you'll leave. It's kind of a very new, modern sort of kind of page. Very, wow, that's a regular system. No, so, so you'll sign up with the Connected Mobile Experiences. Uh, and I hope that you guys do it today, or anybody in the audience. Free 60-day trial is the other thing I'm announcing. Free 60-day trial. You can put your wireless and controller it up. 
the trial will start once you actually turn your controller on. <laughs> so you can sign up today, but wait two weeks to actually get back home and turn the whole thing on. Uh, and you get 63 days after that unless you're providing the service. Just a quick question. Yeah. Uh, will European customers uh, placed in a European-based data center and U.S. customers in U.S.? So, so we are compliant with European data <laughs> laws. Um, we are not allocating, ex uh, we're not sort of dedicating data centers to individual customers at this time. Okay. So we are compliant, but we're not going to be able to, to say specifically, yes, your, your, your data is in Germany or yes, your data is in um, the Netherlands. Okay. We, we will get there. We're probably about four months away to be able to, kind of like Meraki, remember that they first, all this stuff was back in the States and they, they still complied, but they, they, they had a lot more explosion when they moved to a dedicated European. We're kind of doing that same type of transition. So you go and you configure your wireless LAN controller to point it at the cloud, uh, and then boom, you've got your presence analytics that show you um, what's going on with your network, right? Things like the number of visitors, the average dwell time, the device breakdown, right? That's actually something that people have been finding really helpful is because we do a reverse lookup of all the OIDs for both the probing and unprobing clients. We can tell you what percentage of your network is Apple, what percentage is Samsung, what percentage is HTC. As long as they've registered their MAC addresses, which you got it in order to get one, we look that up in the database and can now give you a great report on that. And that's really all I want to talk about today. Is there any questions about CMX Cloud? Please sign up for it. Question. Um, yes, integrating with um, a Bluetooth beaconing environment um, right. to get added analytics. Can mm -hmm. you ex explain that a little bit? Um, so that's not something we offer in the cloud, but this is exact. But what we are, what we do have is we've spent a lot of time working with Bluetooth, and I'm sort of one of the, the leads that we're designing Cisco's Bluetooth final architecture. So Bluetooth, which is actually enabled in our 3,700 access points, so we beacon that stuff out. So you now have a configurable beacon. So that means your application is going to be able to know where it is. And then we work with partners such as Senian that says, hey, this app knows where he is, and then he'll send it in an IP message back to the, the DAN server. And so that's our solution. We have not connected those two, like the device calculated location plus the network calculated location are two ships in the night today. We are going to begin to merge those together, but that's how it works today, that uh, we provide the beacons, we calculate a network location, and our partners calculate a BLE-based location. But boom, soon they will stay tuned for them coming back together. <laughs> Is that something that's going to integrate internally first with your, your on-premises uh, MSC and yes, that environment? Yeah. yeah, so very clearly what we, our development path is we first do it on-prem. We kind of learn how it works. We, we uh, do it in both smalls and large and lab. And then when we figured out how to do it in a larger environment, we then expand it to the cloud. So that's, a, that's how it will work for uh, both the integrated Bluetooth location, which you know Bluetooth is offered today. We work with Senian, we work with Funware, other partners that do device calculation. They have their set of databases of where a device is. We have ours. We're looking at how we're going to merge. Question. Uh, one last thing. Uh, I don't know if you have an example. You said you would ex, uh, let's say, uh, make a nice portal for captive portal. Can you show us something? Uh, yeah. You want me to show you a captive portal? I'm sorry. I'm going to have to. Can I, I'm okay. Can I move? All right, so I wasn't planning on showing moving, but we can uh, do that here. So here I'm logging on to one of our demo boxes. Feel very Meraki like here doing it. <laughs> and so if I go to connect and engage, again, this is not a very good, um, it's only 640 by 480, so I'm not going to be able to show you how it would look like on a larger screen. But when I um, bring up a uh, rendering portal, uh, so this gives me the statistics about what's going on and how they're using it. And so I can go to uh, my library of portals, and I can pick any one. And so let's pick uh, the row. Is a good one. Really difficult with this size. So I'm stretching back and forth. But the idea here is like you can see um, here it is. Um, but here, um, more importantly, is my editing tool, right? So I'll actually go and edit at one and we'll show you how it looks when you're looking the in the edit mode so here's a here's a nice one right so this is a nice looking portal but if i decided you know what would really um, make this portal nicer is if i added a success page and this success page is now going to show up so uh that says after i've logged on you know when i submit that button uh, how does it actually look 
So I've got a nicer looking portal here. Let's build what the success page looks like. I actually can just drag and drop content. So if I say, yeah, I'm gonna drag an element on here, it adds a row for an element. If I decide then what, an element, what image do I wanna choose, I'm going to choose a coupon. And I'll put that coupon in there. And then say, yeah, I want another element. Well, maybe I'm gonna to wanna to add a, uh, an image and text together, right? So now it actually says, hey, here I'm gonna put an image with text wrapped around it. So it actually makes it nice to see. So I can just select on the image and text, choose the image. I'm gonna pick uh, this nice one there. Uh, and then choose the, and then write the, you know, the text is already written. So examples of that. So it's dragging and drop bars of, of capabilities. And then even on this, I've got a really good, um, like I can do things like uh, edit the individual images, uh, change the uh, backgrounds and themes. So if I want to go with a, uh, uh, a blue theme, I can make that default blue. I can actually add also different languages. So if I go, I want to read the, um, the user agent of the browser and say, I'm going to render your page in your user agent language, right? So that's easy enough to do. I can just say, yeah, I want uh, German, boom. And now I've got a second page that I can author that's going to be in German. Right? And I can help you with the German agent. language, yeah? Pardon? I can help you with the German language. Yeah, you can help with the German. We actually specifically did not do, we were, we were going back and forth to do, should we do in-app in translation? You know, wouldn't that be cool? And then we saw some of the translations uh, that, that, that Google did, like we'd send it to Google, like, and so like, no, no, no. You do a German page and you do your English <laughs> uh, page. But that's, but that's what we've got about the ability to uh, create a nicer looking form. Very nice. It's really nice. One of the things that uh, I wish was different about the way Meraki does this is that it was... Yeah. We could do that. <laughs> yeah, right? it's a GUI for you. Let's um, grab and drop it. One of the things that I really like that Meraki does is we can uh, create kind of a managed services sort of portal and I can have a number of customers where I could log into and see all their stuff. Can we do a similar kind of thing here where I have a Cisco account and right. I can see multiple customers' uh, controllers? Uh, that, that is not what we're, what we're offering today, but that is absolutely one of the you know, work items that we're looking at. Okay. Right now, you're gonna have per, per uh, account. And we usually, what would work is that administrator would have access to each of those accounts. Um, but the idea of being able to have a, uh, a parent account with some child accounts on it, is one of our um, plans that's going to come out. Awesome.